Households and businesses which produce their own renewable energy may soon sell the excess energy that they don't consume. Singapore is set to develop its first ever virtual power plant, which will send unused green energy from different sources to the national power grid. And for more about Singapore's first virtual power plant, we are joined in studio by Dr. Ko Liang Mong, a Deputy Program Director at Nanyang Technological University's Energy Research Institute. Thank you, Dr. Ko, for joining us this evening. Now, just help us understand then the difference between a virtual power plant and a traditional power plant. Well, as the word virtual means it's not a physical power plant like uh, the traditional power plant. So it's basically a um, uh, smart software that aggregates the distributed energy resources that can be in, scattered all over the island, right, mm -hmm. and put them together, right, so that we can supply the energy, this energy, to the load which is required, mm. as and when it is required in a very smart, efficient way. And so in the case of renewable energy, sometimes when the sun is good, let's say solar PV, uh, the excess energy can be stored, right, and then use it at a certain time when the sun is not there, right? So by this optimization, we can improve the efficiency use of the energy, right? So that we don't waste any energy. So in that sense, it will bring down uh, efficiency and cost. So the virtual power plant in the nutshell is actually a package of very smart software that aggregates all this energy, distributed energy resources, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, uh, renewable, storage or distributed generations. It can be a small generator that is uh, for local use, and we can add all this together, including like what we mentioned earlier, the solar PV that is owned by private owners. When they have excess energy, we can aggregate all this energy together and put it to the grid or sell it to hmm. the consumer independently. Yes. Hmm. So, Dr. Ko, technology is very important where VPPs, these virtual power plants, are concerned. But when it comes to supplying energy, it's a fine balancing act between trying to secure energy security, uh, affordability, as well as sustainability. So, can you describe to us how VPPs are going to solve our you know, energy s solutions, energy solutions for Okay, Singapore? you mentioned about the energy trilemma. Okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, so generally, people will say that uh, to include, I improve uh, so-called reliability and security, uh, normally you have to spend more money. So let's look at uh, security. Now, improve security and reliability in our case with uh, so-called distributed energy resources or multiple resources, right? So it by itself, it's already some redundancy. So our software is able to aggregate all this and actually do forecasts and knowing which of the resource is available and where the load is. And so we can supply uh, the energy to where it is needed in a very smart way. So our VPP is actually in a way supplying smart energy. Mm. Mm. So it's trying to make the system as efficient as possible. Yes. Yeah, so what are the technical uh, considerations then for NTU in, in developing Singapore's first virtual uh, power plant? Okay, uh, there are various technology, uh, say for instance artificial intelligence, and uh, this is what has been developed in the Energy Research Institute over the years. And of course, a smart grid technology, uh, as well as uh, multi-energy aggregation optimizations, uh, among them including energy storage systems as well. So all these uh, basic uh, technologies already existed in uh, energy research institutions. Mm. So th these are the important considerations when we take up the VPP project, yes. And will the VPP be able to, you know, help Singapore sort of move towards its climate goal commitments? Sure. Uh, with uh, more efficient use of the renewables, become more affordable, right? Once it's more affordable, there will be more people install more renewables, mm. right? With that, that will improve on the, the sort of uh, reduce our carbon footprint and improve on the sustainability of uh, Singapore uh, uh, energy usage. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose oh, yeah. the more people that use it, then the more people will be able to use it. And if the costs keep coming down, then it should sure. become yes. a bigger and bigger part of the of the puzzle. Correct. Yes. Yeah, these are certainly moves in the right direction. Dr. Ko, thank you very much for coming into the studio and sharing this uh, with us. We've been speaking there to Dr. Ko Liang Mong. He's Deputy Program Director at the Multi Energy Systems and Grid at the Energy Research Institution in NTU.